Hi, today I'm going to paint the Eggling Wooly Milk Pig that we drew in the last video. And it's again a no mistakes video because I'll be using gouache paint, which is opaque. And you can cover up anything about your painting that you don't like. So let's just dive in. I start with the sketch of the egg-laying woolly milk pig that we did in the last video. And then on the back of the paper, I use a regular pencil to make graphite all over the back. You can see by holding it up to the light where you're going to need the graphite. Once you do that, you've made it into a carbon traceable paper. And when you turn it over and put it over your canvas board, then you go over the lines with a sharp pencil and the design is transferred onto your canvas board. The type of paint I'm going to use is gouache, G-O-U-A-C-H-E, and you can apply it thickly enough so that it covers the weave of the canvas and also will cover the pencil marks of your drawing. My sketch, as I said, is just a printout of the sketch we did in the last video. So it's an egg-laying woolly milk pig. You can see the barn in the background and there's a nest behind the pig with some eggs in it. And then fuzzy white wool on the top like a sheet. And she also has an udder so you can milk her. It's the one size fits all answer to every farmer's needs. Keep the sketch as a guide while you're painting later so you can see where you're going in case you paint over some of the lines. Now you can see where the design is being transferred onto your canvas board. Gouache comes in little tubes, squirt bottles, and big tubs. I buy the big tubs because you only need three colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then of course you can get white too to lighten them up. But the little squirt bottles that you can buy at craft stores, you get 12, sometimes 18 to a package and they're very inexpensive. The reason I like these paints for both kids and adults is because they are opaque so you can apply them thickly but yet they still are re-wettable, not like acrylic. When you paint with acrylic, and it's dried out, you have to scrape it off the palette or th and throw it away. Whereas with the gouache, you can re-wet it and reuse it. I'm starting by putting the sky in, and as a rule of thumb, skies are lighter near the horizon, usually because of air pollution, and they're darker near the top. So all I did was blend in some white as I got near the bottom of the sky. But it's a good idea not to try to blend it too much because you want to leave it looking sort of impasto and it makes it look more painterly that way. If you've decided to purchase only the three primary colors like I have, red, yellow, and blue, you use the red and yellow mix to make orange and you use the yellow and blue mix to make green and you use the red and blue mix to make purple or violet. If you're working from top to bottom on your painting, that means you're also working from back to front. So it makes it easy because you can put layers just over the top of what you've already done as you're working toward the foreground. So I put a little bit of dark blue in here so it would look like mountains or really distant trees. And then I'm putting some closer trees in with green. You can see on my palette where I've taken dabs of the paint and I'm mixing it with either the brush or a palette knife and can leave it thick. And if it starts drying out on me, I can either drip water onto it or spray water onto it and just keep going. So it makes a great kind of a paint medium to use when you're out plain air painting especially in the desert where I am because everything dries out very quickly. 
you have to make a decision as to where the sun is coming from in your landscape paintings. And I've decided it's coming from the left. So you'll see that side of the barn is lighter and the shadow side is a little bit darker. Same brown paint. I just added a little bit of white for the brighter side. And that brown I, I got by mixing a little bit of red, yellow, and blue and just kept tweaking the mixture until I got it the way I wanted it. But I did not buy brown paint. You actually don't have to buy any earth tone colors. You can mix all the earth tones from red, yellow, and blue in different proportions depending on whether you want the earth tone to be cool like a shadow or warm like the sunshine is hitting it. Now I'm working my way down on the background through the dirt and grass behind the egg laying woolly milk pig. Since I'm going from top to bottom, as I said, that means you're going from back to front. So each thing that I paint or each layer that I put up there is covering the one behind it. And it's okay if they overlap because the paint is opaque. You don't have to worry about having to save whites like you do with regular watercolor. If you use a regular transparent watercolor and you paint a whole grassy field and you forgot to save the white for your daisies or your light colored flowers, then your painting is lost. You have to start over again. But if you're painting a grassy field with gouache, you can go back at the very end and put in white or yellow daisies over the grass and it'll still show. I've tried several different types of paint on camping painting trips and even day trips out into the desert and I've used oil paint but camping in a tent especially if you're with someone else they can smell the oil paint when they're trying to sleep at night and also it gets messy if you're with somebody or even if you yourself happen to be clumsy and you set something down on the oil paint or trip over it and touch it. So that never worked for me for outdoor painting, although it works okay in your studio, in your house. And then when I was using acrylic paint, that was okay, but it's in the desert it dried awful fast and so you couldn't blend something if you wanted to blend it. I've also used colored pencils and those work pretty good in an outdoor painting session, but it's a lot to have to carry with you. Now the perfect thing for me is gouache because like I said, it's rewettable. And also if you happen to drop the painting face down, which I've done into the sand, you can repair it really easily. You can't do that if it's a watercolor painting and you drop it face down or bird or bee or something happens to land on it or dirty it, you've ruined your painting. This gouache I call the bulletproof paint because you can be clumsy with it, you can make mistakes with it, and you still will end up with a nice painting. Historically, gouache was used by illustrators and people who only needed a picture for a temporary time and then would throw it away. They just needed it long enough to take a photograph of it or make a digital copy of it and like myself, use it as an illustration in a children's picture book or some kind of advertising or social media post. It was used by artists who didn't want it as a final fine art piece, but just as a means to an end. However, I found that if you do make a nice painting when you're out and about and you wanna save it, you can use Krylon, which is a clear spray you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or an art supply store. Krylon comes in a matte finish or a glossy finish. I like the matte finish. And when you've gotten the gouache painting exactly like you want it, if you take the Krylon and make very light coats, light careful spraying over it, maybe five or six coats, letting each one dry in between, then you've got a really good bulletproof painting that you can frame without glass 
and hang it. I never liked the expense of framing with glass or the fact that it's easily breakable and very heavy once you've finished it. But if you buy a wrapped canvas that's an inch and a half or two inches wide on the sides, you can paint around the sides of your painting and then when you spray it with the Krylon when you're finished, you don't even have to buy a frame. You can just hang your painting on the wall with the sides, the wraparound sides painted. The smoothness or roughness of your painting is just a matter of personal taste. And I like mine a little bit rough, so I don't do a lot of blending. But if you want to do some blending of colors, even after the paint has dried, you can just take a wet brush and rub it over the area where two colors come together so that you can sort of blend them in. You can see I've done this down by the legs where the shadow is the purple side and the light side is light pink. And then I blend it in the middle with a wet brush. So I have a fun little painting that tells a story. So I hope you enjoyed your painting of the egg-laying woolly milk pig and learning a little bit about the German folklore that goes with it. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of drawing or painting video, please subscribe to my channel and click on the little bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video.